We make make way for uh, the former Heisman Trophy winner, ESPN College Football NFL analyst Robert Griffin Jr. The third, uh, joining us on behalf of Call of Duty Warzone Mobile that drops tomorrow. Our G three joins us now on the program. All right, you made some headlines here, saying that Caleb Williams should bypass the Chicago Bears. Tell us why or how you came up with this. Yeah, Dan, before we uh, before we dive into that, can I say something just to you uh, on a personal level? Yes. Yeah, Dan, I just wanted to say, you know, I've never had a chance to truly say this to you, but but thank you, man. Um, you're a legend in this game. And, you know, what you were able to do at ESPN really helped put ESPN in the position that it is today, uh, showing that you can use nuance, entertainment, have fun. And I wouldn't have been given the opportunity at ESPN from the Bob Igers, the Jimmy Pitaros, uh, you know, the Stephanie Drew Lees, the Norbies, the Seth Markmans, the Dave Roberts, um, if it wasn't for a guy like yourself. So I just want to say I appreciate all them, of course, for giving me the opportunity to be at ESPN. But if it wasn't for a guy like you, I would have been given the opportunity to, to come out and do this and, and have fun doing it the way that I have. So I just wanted to say that to you. I've never had a chance to say that. And I think... Uh... We've been talking to one another since your junior year in college. I think <laughs> right. it's been a been a long time, a long journey here. Uh, so tell us how you came up with the Caleb should say no to the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I mean, the 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 fact of the matter for the Chicago Bears is um, you mentioned that I'm on here for Call of Duty Warzone, right? and uh, get a chance to be a part of Operation Day Zero tomorrow with them and the game. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But speaking of war zones, I decided to start one on Monday uh, by poking the bears. And and really what it came down to for me was the, the truth is, despite all of the additions that the bears have made this offseason, they still have instability at the head coach position. And too many times in NFL history, we've seen teams have very talented rosters, uh, but not have that stability at the coaching position that you need to allow a quarterback to grow. So for me, uh, Matt Eberflus, if you believe in him, I would challenge the Bears to extend him. Uh, Because you have him and Ryan Poles, and I think Ryan Poles done a great job this offseason of adding talent. But when you ask me the specific question of how did I come up with this, it's really just my analysis based off of my own experience and NFL history. Um, So with the Bears, with what they have done, if you're going to bring in a rookie quarterback and you made that decision, we're trading Justin Fields, you made the decision to go with the rookie QB. He needs at least three to four years to be able to work with that head coach so they can grow together. So I, I challenge the Bears. I don't know if they have, but as far as we know, Eberflus is going to be running into 2025. That's when his contract is up based off the contract that he got when he first signed there as the head coach. I think they should extend into 2027. Give him and Caleb Williams an opportunity to build that identity of the team, build that with Ryan Poles at GM, and that way they're not looking over their shoulder. But that would be my challenge to the Bears. Extend Eberflus, give him an, an opportunity to actually grow with Caleb Williams. Otherwise, I don't think it's the best situation. And that's why I said I think Caleb Williams should tell them that he's not going to come. So this hinges mostly on Eberflus being a lame duck coach. If, if he was extended, you'd be fine, Caleb, going to the Bears. Dan, if they extend Matt Eberflus, and I'm not his agent, so not, there's, 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 there's no reason for me to, there's no reason for me to say this. I thought he did an amazing job with the Colts as a defensive coordinator, but if they came out and said, Hey, we've extended Matt Eberflus, gave him an, another, a two year extension, a three year extension. I would, I would not only just take back what I said, I'd go out, do another video and explain why it was so important that they did that. And uh, I don't know, wear a Bears jersey for the for the next week. I don't but know. But I that... wonder how social media would treat Caleb Williams if he and his representatives say, we're going to pull an Eli and a John Elway. Right. And and I watch the show as well, Dan, because I'm a fan. And, uh, and I think you do a great job. So I, I did see that yesterday you talked about uh, what social media would say because there was no social media when John Elway did it. And there was no social media when Eli Manning did it. And you also mentioned something about whether I even believed what I was saying, which I thought was funny, but I can confirm, Dan, that I I believe everything that I said. And I I don't think social media has been kind to Caleb Williams anyway. 
I don't think that if he was to make a decision like this, it would ramp up the hate uh, more than it already has been there. I mean, we've had discussions about whether real men cry. Uh, is Caleb Williams tough enough to be able to survive in the NFL environments? Um, I think for him, um, I don't think that he'll do this. It would just, in my opinion, if he does not want to be in Chicago for whatever reasons, some that I've outlined or maybe some other concerns that he has, I think he should exercise that and not worry about what social media says, because social media is not going to be the one that determines whether or not he's successful over the next five years. It's going to be the organization. And I don't think the Bears did right by Justin Fields either, by the way. Um, I did hear you you uh, speak about that. And, and I'll just say that our own Adam Schefter at ESPN reported that the Bears didn't have any serious offers that were better than the one that the Pittsburgh Steelers offered them. So I they did not turn down better offers to send Justin Fields to Pittsburgh. It just so happened that they didn't have any other better offers and they accommodated sending him to Pittsburgh. To me, that's a very different distinction. And I think the spin, the spin on that the past couple of days has been pretty funny to watch. Well, there are the reports out there that they did turn down better offers and that they were going to do right by, I think Philadelphia was interested in Justin Fields, and I thought that would have been the ideal place for him to go. I, I, would, I would agree that I think that there were other teams that may have been interested uh, in Justin Fields, but they weren't interested enough to make a better offer. So the, I can only go by the reports from guys sure. from our network. Sure. You know, and, and Adam Schefter is, is one of the best in the game, if not the best in the game, and he came out and said that they did not have serious better offers for Justin Fields. So that's all I can operate by. And the only thing I would uh, bring up as well, and you know this better than anybody, there's been turnover with the commanders, but that's yeah. not exactly you know a safe haven to fall back on just because you're going home if you're Caleb Williams. I still, I don't think the commander's roster and you got a defensive-minded, I hate defensive-minded head coaches if you bring in rookie quarterbacks, right? <laughs> but aren't you saying that, isn't that what the, the Bears have? But that's what the commanders have. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's what the Bears have. So if you hate the defense, I, I wouldn't have kept Matt Eberflus. That, so that that's my point about all of this. Like I even mentioned it in the video. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was hilarious that people started talking about the last hundred years for the Bears <laughs> when I clearly <laughs> stated at the beginning of the video just Justin Fields, right? But listen, if I just I'm a big believer in we got to hold organizations accountable for poor plans poor fits and poor development of players too often. We just blame the player. Oh, it was his fault. It was this, like we got to hold organizations accountable. And if you're building a team with a young rookie quarterback, you either fire the coach because you're not sure about him, Right. We know this. We, we talked about it uh, all off season at the beginning of the off season. There was uncertainty about whether or not the bears were going to keep Matt Eberflus. If you're already saying that, once you decide to to make the decision to go rookie quarterback, you either got to fire that guy or you got to extend him. Yeah, and, and that's that's where I'm at. So when you look at Washington, I'm I'm actually I'm shooting uh, my podcast RG three and the ones today, and I'll go even more in depth on this whole topic. But for Washington, it's more of a clean slate, new ownership, new GM, new head coach. They're going to probably get at least three years to figure this thing out. If the Bears don't win more than seven games, I don't think if they don't win 10 games to go to the playoffs, Matt Eberflus is not going to be there. Yeah. I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think it's fair to his family. I don't think it's fair to whatever quarterback they draft. Whoever it is, I, I'm just challenging the Bears. Come out and say you extended him or extend him. You know, I know that's not their traditional practice, but security and stability is, the, is one of the most important things for a head coach uh, quarterback combination. All right. Just to get you on record, your favorite quarterback in the draft is who's the best quarterback in the draft? Yeah, it's Caleb Williams. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have loved it if you said Jaden Daniels. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I, I understand um, everyone's going to have their opinion and, and, and it's lying season right now, right? We do this every year. Uh, now, uh, apparently to some people, Drake May is not even a top five quarterback in the draft class. Right. So we, we pick these guys apart. That's not really what I do. I like to show the fan what these guys do well. Uh, I will do that leading up to the draft as well. But Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this draft class. It's not that the rest of the guys aren't extremely talented or great. It's just that Caleb Williams is the number one guy. Uh, we're talking to RG3. Uh, he is joining us on behalf of Call of Duty Warzone Mobile that drops tomorrow. How'd you get involved in this? 
Well, I mean, I've been a big Call of Duty fan my my entire life. I can't sit here and, and tell you that I'm I'm like a ranked player in the world. You're not like a I Kyler did... Murray, are you? Where you were focusing on video games more than the playbook? <laughs> uh, okay, oh, who even said that that was true, man? I can't I can't sit here and confirm that that okay. to be true. If Kyler Murray likes video games, I'm okay with okay. that. Okay, all right, but I will say that I, I've been a fan of Call of Duty for a really long time. So this is a dream come true to be able to be in partnership with them. And really what it comes down to is this is Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. So for all the gamers that use the PCs and use the game consoles, basically everything that you're doing on the console can now be done on your phone. All the, the building up of your weapons and, and building up of your arsenal, is e it transfers immediately to the phone. Your friends, contacts, the people you play with comes over to the phone as well. And for me, Dan, it's, it makes it so much easier because of the schedules that we have. You know, you you were blessed to have this show and, and be able to be one of the leaders in the industry and, and kind of, you know, chart your own path. Right now, I'm trying to get to that point. So I'm everywhere. I'm traveling for college football, NFL, doing all these different things. So for me to be able to have an opportunity to play the video game on my phone and, and have all of the resources of the traditional Call of Duty Warzone from the console makes it easy for me. And I look forward to, to having a blast. Uh, tomorrow being out there in L.A. at the headquarters to have a good time. So there's no truth to the rumor Kyler Murray would use Call of Duty uh, kind of words as audibles. Like he wouldn't yell out war zone, war zone, and that was like his Omaha, Omaha, right? I'm guessing. Well, I, was, I, I can I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay. Right, but right. what I will say is that uh, for all my gamers out there, uh, the, the better you get at video games, just my opinion speaking, the better you get at video games, video games is problem solving. What is football? It's problem solving. You get to the line of scrimmage, you diagnose the defense, you figure out how to attack it. That's what that's what Warzone is. Yeah, but you got to watch tape though too. I mean, yeah, but you you do. And and these gamers out here, they're watching tape. Like, I, I, Dan, I don't know if you understand <laughs> how how dedicated. Oh, I know. These games, my son, these gamers are. Yeah, my to, son to is a games. Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're unbelievable. So if Kyler Murray's watching this, I just want you to know, my man, <laughs> I support you. Play Call of Duty as much as you want <laughs> yeah, and, and go ahead and sneak some film in there as well. All right. <laughs> Good to talk to you. Thank you, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. God That's bless. Uh, RG3, or as McLovin referred to him as Robert Griffith Jr. the <laughs> third. Robert Griffith Jr. Still one of the most amazing moments that we had.